Today's video is one full day of street photography in Japan, beginning in the historical city of Kyoto and ending in the flashy metropolis of Osaka. Take a trip with me as I explore these two cities and capture them on 35mm film. The film stocks featured in today's video are two of my favorites. I started the day with a roll of Flick Film's Electro 100, which is a fantastic way to buy Kodak Aerocolor. Then, after nightfall, I loaded Cinestill 800T, because shooting Cinestill in the streets of a Japanese megacity is probably on every film photographer's bucket list. So, jumping into the day here, I woke up at 5am and walked to Shichijo Station in Kyoto. I wanted to get to Fushimi Inari Taisha before any other tourists, partly for the unobstructed photos and partly for the experience. This shrine sits at the base of Inari Mountain and includes a network of trails leading up the mountain to a network of smaller shrines. Inari is primarily the kami of rice and agriculture, but is also worshipped as a patron of business. The trails of the mountain are lined by over 10,000 tori, scarlet gates, that have each been donated by a different Japanese business. Altogether, these gates give the impression of walking through a hallway. This hike is about an hour long, and on this day I went up with three travel companions. But the following day I made the journey alone, about 40 minutes earlier in the morning. And this was an immense experience. I was completely alone on the mountain for the first half of the hike. It was pitch black, and the gaps between the gates flickered in my peripheral vision. Shadows of the dark forest that lay beyond this strange red hallway. Roots, vines, and spirits, maybe. The train at the base of the mountain reverberated through the trees, making a sound like a low moaning. Or was it the train? As I walked on, the coming dawn stained the sky a deep indigo and sent the ravens above into cacophonous croaking. There was one other person I encountered on my way up, a security guard. He followed me up the mountain a ways, careful to stay as far behind as possible, so that when I turned and looked back down the long red hallway, striped as it was with intermittent darkness, there would be a solitary outline of a human shadow, cast at the very end of the tunnel, waiting for me to make my next move. Anyways, there's a great view at the halfway point, I got some snaps of that. And by the time I reached the top on both days, the sun had risen and the early morning joggers had surpassed me. On my street photography day, my partner made it to the top with me, and we skipped back down in no time. But on my solo day, I twisted my ankle right at the top and limped back down alone. Dues, I suppose, for disturbing a spiritual place like this so early in the morning. Heading back down to the historical district of Gion now, and you can see the area is thoroughly populated with tourists. Gion was Kyoto's entertainment district of the Sengoku period, but it grew to become one of the best-known geisha districts in Japan. Today, it stands as a historical area, with many original buildings. I could easily have burnt an entire roll of film here just on shots of streets and alleyways. And eventually, I had to give myself a rule that I wasn't allowed to take any more photographs that relied entirely on leading lines to make them interesting, too touristy and too tempting. We walked back to the B&B from Gion along Camo River. The riverside laid bare the rear facades of many historical buildings, an interesting mix of old, new, western, and Japanese-style architecture. Midway down the river, a woman knelt feeding the birds. Every manner of flock and fowl swooped above her head, enchanting me, for sure with ravens, hawks, herons, cranes of all variety, intermixed with common seagulls, pigeons, ducks, and crows. Passing her, we crossed back over the bridge to our Airbnb, and I took a short nap to restore some stamina before heading back out to Osaka. The train ride to Osaka was about an hour long on the express train, and cost only five dollars. I emerged from Yodoyabashi Station to a great view of Tasahari River, which I followed eastward until Osaka Castle came into view. Crossing one of many overpass walkways, I landed in the castle grounds, bordering the outer moat. I had explored the castle grounds previously on the trip, so this time I elected to skirt them and instead peruse the border between old and new, castle and city. Is that a UFO? <laughs> Maybe you should go and watch my video on UFOs and photography. <laughs> A bit of a time skip here, since there wasn't much to see in this area until I reached a network of side streets and again had to enforce my rule. No more pictures of just leading lines. Except this one. This was around the time that school was getting out, and groups of school children were passing me in their class uniforms. I set my course to take me towards Yue Roku Camera, which, I should have mentioned before, was my reason for visiting Osaka. A few days prior, I had dropped off five rolls of film to be developed and scanned, 
and since the photos turned out so well, I decided it was worth the journey back to pick up my negatives. Yue Roku was about 45 minutes away on foot, a journey which I stretched to an hour and a half with my perusing and meandering. I zigzagged down these side streets, following whatever caught my eye, until I realized that I was very close to Yue Roku. I highly recommend this lab. They were fast, affordable, and friendly. The woman behind the counter was dressed almost identically to myself, and I felt a sort of kinship that we had developed the same aesthetic preferences and passion for film photography, despite being from very different cultures and places. Exiting Yue Roku, I charted a new course to a random camera store in Dotonburi, Osaka's principal nightlife district. The sun was creeping down in the sky, and the light was becoming sideways and golden. I always start to feel a bit frenzied at this time of day when I'm out taking photographs. Golden hour is such a brief window, and finding good photos is such a long process. I start power walking, charging, looking around corners, doubling back. We're losing light, full steam ahead. In this case, the buildings of Osaka were tall enough to block out the majority of golden hour light throughout the area I was exploring, save for select street corners that were few and far between. I all but ran between these, camping on each, snapping hastily at any interesting passers-by. And of course, in this haste, came away with nothing particularly exciting. Once these golden hour shreds had slipped away, the sky was still bright blue for some time, so I delved into a few covered shopping streets. One of these led to the next, into the next, each busier than the last, tempting and eventually seducing me with all manner of deliciously dressed food items. Finally, I emerged onto the banks of Dotambari River and beheld the most iconic view in all of Osaka. Snapping my last few frames of Electro 100, I switched to my role of Sinistil and haunted the banks of the river for several more minutes, scrutinizing it from every angle. Blue hour was creeping up, and this was the moment that I had been waiting for. The neon lights were flickering on, lamps buzzing, streets welcoming all manner of well-dressed diners and partygoers, food stalls billowing steam beckoning in tourists. I had already taken many neon light-centric photos on my Japan trip. So I promised myself that I would be significantly more experimental and less precious with this role of Sinistil. I tried all manner of multiple exposures, some of which worked very well, and some of which didn't work at all. I combined long exposure with multiple exposure, silhouette, light painting. I had a four-pointed star filter, which I put to work a few times, as well as a diffusion filter I tried out. I roamed this area thoroughly from end to end and back again as the sky turned from blue to black. Participated in the ritual of waiting for a crosswalk, running into the middle of the road and snapping pictures before the light goes green. Flanked by Japanese teenagers wielding vintage Minolta and Pentax and tourists with lenses as long and wide as hand cannons. Tripping over mothers and grandfathers aiming cell phones every which way, sharing the view via video call with relatives around the world. Here are my two favorite shots from the roll, maybe from the whole day. And here's the end of the video. Thank you so much for watching. If you like this video, check out my street photography playlist to see more like it. Subscribe to my channel. I put out new photography related content almost every week. And if you want to support my channel, check out the link below to buy me a coffee. All proceeds from this link go towards improving the quality of the videos I create. I really appreciate your support and viewership, and I'll see you back here next week for another Japan related video. Until then, stay sharp, and don't forget to keep shooting.